Twitters from the Atlantic by Barry Mahoney. Bankers go bananas. I thought that I recognised the voice over the underground station speaker system. It sounded familiar, but I couldn't quite place it. The door slid silently to a close as I sat in the immaculate carriage and sped my way to Canary Wharf. Many years had passed since I last made the journey to this centre of the UK's banking industry, and I was curious to see how it had developed. It was a strange day to visit, as the Barclays interest rate scandal had just been announced, and it was clear that heads would soon roll. I was also curious since many years ago, when the Thatcher government was busily telling UK citizens that they should all be shareholders, my building society account had been gobbled up by the bank that was now causing so much grief to government and bankers alike. It was now based in Canary Wharf. It was a delicious form of irony, as it seemed that a number of wayward chickens were about to come home to roost. I felt a special affinity to this part of London. The Canary Islands are now my home, and I am well aware of the banana trade and the impact that it made upon Canary Wharf. Bananas from the Canary Islands were once uploaded right into the centre of what is now London's vibrant financial district, which takes its name from the number 10 warehouse of the South Quay import dock. It was built in 1952 for the Canary Islands fruit trade. This grey glass and steel paradise proudly retains the name Canary Wharf to this day. The train slid into the bland and clinical station. I stepped out to the concrete stainless steel and glass structure, relieved to smell relatively fresh air once again. It was a grey, depressing day, and the grey steel, concrete and glass structures that loomed around me seemed to be more intimidating than the last time that I had visited. Apart from a few tourists holding their Union flag umbrellas, the place seemed abandoned. I wandered alongside the river for a while, marvelling at the huge number of sushi bars, coffee shops and fast food restaurants. Most were empty. At exactly midday, thousands of ant-like creatures appeared from the grey glass and steel towers. I've never seen so many suits gathered in one place at one time before. These ant-like creatures swept into the sushi bars, coffee shops and fast food restaurants, devouring anything in sight. I wandered into one of the many high-tech shopping centres, glass doors silently opening and closing behind me. Suit-clad ants sped in all directions, carrying what seemed to be an obligatory cup of coffee in a plastic mug in one hand and a mobile phone clamped in the other. Expressionless faces swept by me as they darted around this high-tech paradise. I sat inside one of the many coffee shops, sipping my coffee, watching these expressionless faces. Many were deep in conversation on their mobiles or peering into the screens of laptops, mobiles and tablets. Few were talking to each other. The enormous screens in the coffee bar continued to beam endless streams of trading figures, financial statistics and transfixed anxious faces by its magic seductive power. By mid-afternoon, the ants had all but disappeared back into their grey steel and glass towers. The anxious chattering into handsets silenced. Busy cafe bars, restaurants and sushi bars emptied and the streets were deserted once again. I returned to the station, anxious to return to what I regarded as normal civilization. I was troubled by what I'd seen and experienced. It was not a happy place. It reminded me of a book that I'd read long ago, but I couldn't quite remember. A familiar voice boomed around the station once again. It was slightly humorous, with a hint of self-deprecation yet tinged with just a hint of threat. Yes, the book was 1984, and I suddenly realised that I'd briefly entered the Orwellian nightmare. I now recognise the voice of Big Brother. It was the voice of Boris Johnson, the Mayor of London. If you've enjoyed this Twitter, do have a look at my website, www.barrymahoney.com, and thank you for listening.